good morning so today we are going to learn about a very interesting subject that is environment laws and policies so since this is the first lecture so we are going to understand what is the necessity of environment laws and policies in this context we are going to learn about few basic thing so this this will be basically the first introduction class for environment laws and policies we will learn what is environment what are important components of environment we will learn what led to formulation of environmental policies and laws basically what were the conditions that led to Uh, the requirement of environment laws and policies you all must have heard a very popular phrase that is necessity is the mother of invention which basically means if something is utmost required it has to be either uh, invented or procured or developed okay similarly there were certain uh, problems certain issues which had to be addressed and for that particular reason environmental laws and policies were brought into picture so we will quickly move into the details so environment environment from your uh, school days only you must have heard the term environment environment is basically everything that is in and around us okay the ambience everything in and around us that means the atmosphere the water the so soil which is part of the earth okay the air that we breathe in the flora the fauna okay plants animals vegetation everything including we the human beings we are all components of the environment so the environment refers to the natural world as a whole or the surrounding in which living organisms including humans animals and plants exist so it basically encompasses the air water land and various ecosystems and their interactions the environment plays a crucial role in sustaining life by providing resources such as clean air water food and shelter everything uh, that is required for our survival we get it from the environment only we get food crops okay from where we get food crops we get basically food crops from the earth okay by agriculture so that is part of the environment we need water for irrigation for providing water uh, to meet the requirements of the crops for growing of growth of crops so that water is basically facilitated by the environment <coughs> you all have learned about water cycle uh, surface sources of water ground sources of water water which is the very bas basic essence of living which is very very at most important for survival you know we can survive without food for few days but we cannot survive without water water on this earth comprises of around 70% okay and in our body also it uh, com uh, comprises of around 70% so it's the most vital material required for survival so we get that from water uh, from the environment only beg your pardon we get air that we breathe in from the environment only we build houses complexes buildings and all the structures over this earth only environment only so preserving and protecting the environment is very essential for sustaining life on earth and requires efforts to conserve natural resources minimize pollution protect ecosystem and promote sustainable practices to ensure the well-being of present and future generations so you must have heard the term sustainable or very often you will uh, you will get to listen to the word uh, sustenance sustainable that is what that is basically when we utilize utilize a resource in such a wise manner that uh, in spite of we using the resource 
it will be preserved for the future generation also means optimum use not wasting anything okay not using excess of anything so that it is utilized in optima optimum way and it is also preserved for future generation that is basically the meaning of sustainable which can be kept into existence for the use of future generation also so we need to inculcate into our daily routine this sustainability we should utilize the natural resources both renewable as well as non renewable in such a way because non renewable resources also they come from the natural resources only the ultimate source is the natural resources only just like fossil fuels coal petroleum natural gas they are all basically formed from decomposition of all the organic and inorganic matter okay so everything comes from the environment only so that has to be done the sustainability practice has to be included in the part and parcel of life and at the same time there should be efforts made to reduce pollution you know development for development we actually uh, have to utilize the resources but utilizing the resources uh, goes hand in hand with the generation of pollution so that pollution has to be taken care of that pollution has to be effort had, has to be made to reduce that pollution we need to protect the ecosystem ecosystem is what ecosystem is everything okay uh, that is living in nature okay all the flora fauna animal kingdom plant kingdom human beings everything we are part of the ecosystem as well as the ambient environment okay so you must have heard about food chain food web you must have heard about certain species getting endangered and certain species which have become extinct now and you know if certain species vanish just like there have been efforts to protect tiger lions okay certain species of birds certain species of uh, suppose suppose one horned rhinoceros or suppose asiatic lions okay siberian crane they are all very very vital species and we should not be thinking that if any particular species of animal or plant vanishes it won't affect us it will definitely affect us why it is called food chain and food web because everything is interconnected if something goes missing okay that is going to affect the other levels present in that particular food chain and food web so directly or indirectly it is going to affect us in the short run or in the long run so there is no way to escape that okay and for our own benefit for our own survival we need to protect and we need to nourish protect and basically flourish every species that exist and you know other than human beings other than homo sapiens other organisms never pollute the environment they never cause any kind of uh, they never harm the environment they do not cause any kind of they do not pose any kind of threat to the environment so we the human beings we utilize the natural resources and we only create problems for the environment you must have heard the term anthropogenic anthropogenic basically means all those activities done by human beings which affect the environment flora fauna everything okay now key components of environment you know students there are three vital components of the environment namely the atmosphere hydrosphere lithosphere and the amalgamation or the mix of all these things the complete mix of all these things is basically the biosphere okay so atmosphere it is the layer of air a blanket of air present in and around us okay the layer of gases surrounding the earth it contains oxygen nitrogen carbon dioxide and other gases vital for life you must have heard or learned about the components of atmosphere i mean the gases which make up the atmosphere nitrogen oxygen carbon dioxide another trace gases i need not repeat this because 
uh, you have learnt about this so atmosphere then hydrosphere hydrosphere is basically water okay hydro basically refers to water segment so water which is very very essential for existence of mankind okay so that is the hydros hydrosphere all water bodies on earth including oceans rivers lakes ground water glaciers they are basically part of the hydrosphere then the lithosphere what is this lithosphere lithosphere is basically uh, the land surface the earth part of earth on which we roam we dwell okay that solid outer layer you know uh, earth can be divided into three layers the innermost layer is known as core core of the earth then layer above that is known as uh, mantle okay and the layer above that is known as crust the topmost layer so the solid outer layer the earth crust okay includes rocks soils landforms and minerals everything that we need for our sustenance be it food crops or we reside in houses we build industries we build factories okay uh, we dig tunnels in the mountains we build roads everything is done basically on the lithosphere only and biosphere which is basically the complete mixture of all these three vital components of atmosphere <coughs> i beg your pardon all three basic components of environment atmosphere hydrosphere lithosphere the mixture of all these things the complete package of all these things is known as biosphere in diagram you can see in the top atmosphere has been represented then water portion hydrosphere has been represented then the land surface lithosphere has been represented and then these greeneries and uh, in the diagram a duck or swan has been shown bird has been shown okay tree trees with fruits has been shown that is basically biosphere which is basically preserved and which is basically established which basically exists with the help of all the three vital components atmosphere hydrosphere and lithosphere so <coughs> next environmental issues such as climate change pollution defore deforestation loss of biodiversity resources depletion pose significant threat to the well-being of the planet and its inhabitants so now we come to the segment that uh, what is basically the requirement of environmental laws so there are many vital burning issues that we are facing today you must have witnessed also the erratic monsoon the every year we hear in the news na that uh, temperature has recorded a new high in the winter season temperature has recorded a new low <coughs> you must have heard that the glaciers they are melting down then there is a global warming even the places we used which used to be very colder earlier okay they are getting hotter just like you must have heard that switzerland the temperature is increasing over there which is the favorite tourist des destination then in united kingdom london england okay they never witnessed such a hot summer season which they are experiencing now okay then uh, glaciers in the himalayas they are melting then there is very very high amount of greenhouse gases in the atmosphere which is trapping lot of heat global warming is increasing plants and animal species are endangered there are certain loss of biodiversity there is a huge huge depletion of resources <coughs> and due to that un unscrupulous depletion of resources frequent landslides collapsing of tunnels uh, mountains okay that that is taking place you must have heard recently the uttarakhand tunnel okay where the laborers were trapped for maybe 20 or 21 days and they had to be rescued thanks to god that they uh, survived but these type of disasters are occurring every now and then and they pose a significant challenge to the well-being of the planet and its 
inhabitants that is us and other components of the other living components of the environment so addressing these challenges often require collective efforts to promote sustainability conservation and responsible resource management efforts to protect the environment involve various strategies and initiatives which includes <coughs> conservation sustainable practices environmental policies and regulations renewable energy education and awareness so these are basically the efforts the steps that have been taken and that has to be implemented in the most effective manner to tackle the environmental issues to deal with climate change to prevent loss of biodiversity to curtail the pollution level that we are witnessing so conservation it basically means preserving and protecting natural resources and ecosystems then sustainable practices sustainable practices i have just uh, one or two slide back i have explained students sustainability sustainability basically means using the resource in the most optimum way in the most efficient way so that it is preserved for further use in future okay that is sustainability when we are exploring we are when we are exploiting the resources we should not do that in such a way that we we only consume it in its entirety and it's not available for future generation or it's not available for further use that should not be the practice so sustainable practice should be there promoting methods that meet present needs without compromising future generations ability to meet their needs then environmental policies and regulations so implementing laws and regulations to control pollution protect endangered species and conserve natural resources you know even though a strong public opinion has to be made for uh, protection of flora and fauna for uh, prevention of pollution but unless and until we make strong laws and we also ensure its enforcement if we make laws and if we do not implement it then it will be futile it will be useless so laws have to be made and they have to be rigorously implemented so that the environment is protected so implementing laws and regulations to control pollution protect endangered species and conserve natural resources then renewable energy so developing and using clean renewable energy sources to reduce reliance on fossil fuels and decrease greenhouse gas emissions you know students the greenhouse gases carbon dioxide water vapor methane okay these are all basically the greenhouse gases the cfcs uh, which is basically produced in the process of refrigeration okay refrigerators air conditioners they release the chlorofluorocarbon cfcs and they basically uh, react with ozone and they deplete the ozone you must have heard the term ozone layer depletion then carbon dioxide methane if they are produced on large scale and how they are produced they are produced due to burning of fossil fuels the coal petroleum natural gas when they burn okay they have a calorific value and they also emit carbon dioxide methane is produced as a by product of decomposition of organic and inorganic matter okay and they and there are several other ways by which basically methane is produced ch4 and that methane traps a lot of heat okay that methane is capable enough that carbon dioxide is cap capable enough to increase greenhouse effect by many folds so since greenhouse effect is a is a blessing is a boon for us but uh, very high scale trapping of heat from the sun causes temperature of earth to increase by many times so the average temperature of earth has increased in this uh, two centuries okay in this 200 years of industrial revolution uh, the global temperature of earth overall average temperature of earth has increased and if it if it keeps on increasing in this 
manner okay then one day it will be a possibility that not only the glaciers the mountains of ocean uh, mountains of snow okay they may melt down and a large scale flooding which can devastate everything which can basically destroy everything so that kind of flooding may occur okay and also that heat will be unbearable for us when the temperature of earth when the average temperature weather okay in summer season okay if it increases to 50 degree centigrade just imagine 60 degree centigrade can we survive we can survive but it will be very very difficult no work can be done in the scorching sun okay you see in the summer season only all the hard laborers or people who work hard in the daylight in the scorching sun so how difficult it will be for them and how difficult it will be for children for elderly people to survive in that extreme heat so that is why we have to reduce the production of carbon dioxide methane and greenhouse gases okay and we should explore we should exploit the natural resources fossil fuels is used but can we not utilize the tidal energy the wind energy okay the hydro hydro capacity we cannot utilize the natural resources so we should try and utilize uh, natural resources just like solar panels okay solar cells solar panels are used for generation of electricity tidal energy wind mills basically for utilizing the wind energy okay then the ocean water and all they are exploited they are explored for uh, producing energy so that coal petrol our dependency on coal petroleum natural gases are reduced then education and awareness you know students it's very very important for development of a strong public opinion and mass public awareness then only this problem can be minimized then only this problem can be curtailed so nature so what is this nature nature basically refers to natural world and everything that exist without human intervention so it encompasses all living and non living things that occur naturally on earth from landscapes flora fauna to the forces and phenomena of physical world so basically nature is ambient atmosphere ambient flora fauna everything plants animals okay vegetation other animals animal kingdom plant kingdom everything that is part of the nature all the natural things okay which surrounds us they are part of the nature so key aspects of nature are listed just like flora and fauna flora plant kingdom and fauna animal kingdom so uh, the plants flora and animals fauna the, you will hear this term frequently flora and fauna please do remember flora refers to the plants and fauna uh, refers to the animals that exist in various ecosystem around the world it covers a vast range of uh, species from microscopic organisms to large mammals trees plants insects and more then landscapes and geology <coughs> natural encompasses a uh, diverse uh, landscapes including mountains forests deserts rivers oceans basically all the uh, natural structures that uh, exist in the environment okay be it mountains plateaus forests it may be a very dense forest it may be a less dense forest deserts okay just like sahara desert gobi desert we have in our india thar desert <coughs> in gujarat run of kutch then rivers just like ganga river the most pious river most revered river of india oceans basically four oceans okay indian ocean pacific ocean atlantic ocean and <coughs> those oceans okay 
so it involves geological formations such as rocks soil minerals and natural features shaped by geological processes like erosion and tectonic movements so you know the tectonic plates of earth uh, the folds the faults they basically give rise to various kinds of natural structures right just like uh, once upon a time there used to be a gondwana land and then uh, the tectonic plate movements it gave rise to suppose the uh, indian subcontinent okay it drifted away because you will see that once upon a time the gondwana land if you refer to the physical not political but uh, physical map of the world and you can see it just like a jigsaw puzzle many portions of uh, several countries they can best fit with each other as if they were together once upon a time okay so this tectonic plate movements Uh, basically separated them and built new features and then the uh, geopolitical boundaries and all several countries okay they proclaimed their independence their existence okay they built their international uh, national boundaries <coughs> with the development of human civilization and with the progress and advent of science and technology so natural forces and phenomenon so natural phenomenon like weather patterns climate changes earthquakes volcanic eruptions and the water cycle are part of the nature so these forces shape the environment and influence influence the lives of living organisms then ecosystem and biodiversity biodiversity diversity means what means uh, existence of different kind of suppose plants different kind of animals okay different kind of components of flora and fauna that is basically biodiversity you know thousands of breeds of fishes thousands of species of birds thousands of species of plants so we see every now and then right so they are all part of the biodiversity and that is the beauty of nature okay it exists in its most diverse manner and that has to be preserved and secured ecosystem is basically all that flora fauna everything which lives in harmony with each other and with, which cater to each other that is basically the ecosystem so biodiversity the variety of life forms within these ecosystems is very crucial aspect of nature and contributes to the resilience and balance of ecosystem so human activities often interact and impact nature sometimes leading to environmental changes habitat destruction Uh, species extinction and alternation in natural cycles now uh, one important segment is origin of envi environmental laws so what circumstances led to the origin of environmental laws you know just few minutes back i have referred to a very popular phrase which is necessity is the mother of invention so there were environmental issues there were issues of global warming there were issues of uh, frequent landslides there were issues of uh, climate change there were several uh, episodes of national and international uh, environmental disasters just like the chernobyl nuclear incident or the minimata in itai itai diseases the outbreak of uh, bhopal gas tragedy similarly uh there were several after the unscrupulous uh, misutilization of the resources several environmental issues were created okay some were affecting a particular country and some were affecting the entire world just like global warming climate change it's not the issue for any particular country okay it is affecting all the countries existing in this world the temperature of earth is increasing so they are naturally everyone is going to be affected climate change okay it is going to affect all the countries but the pollution chapters the close pollution disasters which happen in a particular country so they may be regulated limited to a particular country but by and large these environmental issues they affect all the countries so the industrial revolution which was a 
very very uh, necessary chapter that or episode that took place in human kind okay industrial revolution which lead to origin of machines which uh, basically led to development of industries factories machines okay locomotives vehicles the progress of the vehicles which uh, uh, led to development of electricity and all the comforts that we enjoy today are basically uh, product of they are all outputs of that industrial revolution only the rapid industrialization during the 18th and 19th century led to increased pollution now i have told you any development any progress come comes hand in hand with certain kind of pollution okay because the resources are utilized the resources deplete they are degraded and as a natural consequence pollution is created so environmental impact prompted awareness of consequences of unregulated industrial activities then conservation movements now when this pollution will occur naturally the environmentalist they will step together okay they will take steps to counter that okay you must have heard about the chipko movement which was uh, a movement launched by the great sundarlal bahuguna to protect the trees okay they used to just uh, attach themselves with the trees and they used to tell that before cutting the trees you need to chop down us and by that they protected the trees so it was a very popular movement right so throughout history various conservation movements emerged to uh, protect natural resources and wildlife so notable figures like john muir in the united states and movements such as establishment of national parks highlighted the need for preserving the nature and natural resources so there were several episodes of environmental disasters i just referred few minutes back okay just like the london popular london smog of 1952 smog is basically a combination of fog and smoke okay the dangerous combination a yellowish patch of hazy uh, okay uh, hazy patch exist and that creates very very low vision okay vision is affected and that can lead to uh, accidents okay collision of vehicles and very very uh, reduction in the speed of the vehicular movements particularly at night then minimata disease which occurred in japan okay where mercury poisoning took place so then there were itai itai diseases okay the one such pollution episode only then the the popular uh, bhopal gas tragedy that took place in our country in 1984 which lead to uh, large scale uh, death and crippling of people injury then the silent spring so it's important so rachel carson's book silent spring published in 19 basically mr carson did a research and concluded that the ddt spray okay which were used for prevention of mosquitoes and all so that ddt what is ddt dichloro diphenyl trichloroethane so basically it was a spray which was used for prevention of the mosquitoes and it was also used as a popular uh, pesticide so it led to large scale pollution of water bodies right that is why the ddt sprays were banned so this influential work sparked public concern and discussion among about the use of harmful chemicals in agriculture so as a pesticide also ddt was discouraged for prevention of mosquitoes also ddt spray was discouraged and now it is banned totally banned in the first environmental laws so first important step towards the development of environmental laws took place in 1970 in united states and that is nepa national environmental policy act which was passed in united states in 1970 was a important step which required environmental impact assessment for uh, federal projects shortly after environmental protection was formed to enforce environmental regulations then global environmental awareness several conferences symposiums okay workshops took place to generate awareness among the people okay just like stockholm uh, 
in 1972 montreal protocol in 1987 kyoto protocol in 1997 highlighted the need for global cooperation to address environmental challenges like climate change and ozone depletion so basically uh, with time this awareness increased and these uh, conferences symposiums public awareness programs okay they were they took place and they created environmental awareness so these laws uh, these laws these policies aim to curtail pollution okay preserve natural resources protect endangered species manage waste and mitigate the impact of human activities on environment and they continue to evolve as new environmental challenges emerge and scientific understanding deepens so that's all for today uh, we'll continue further in next class thank you so much